always like to just, I can't help, I got, I got some people sending me memes all the time, and I can't help but just share. Some of them are relevant a little bit to the message, and some of them are just funny. And so um, I came across this one um, just the other day. Uh, when the Holy Ghost makes you delete the whole text and just reply with, okay. <laughs> yeah, I better just do that. <laughs> a lot of y'all laughing on that one. <laughs> This, one just, this one's just funny. I just like this one. How your mom looked when the pastor said something about disobedient children. <laughs> uh, next one here. This fan better blow the, whole, the, the Holy Spirit through the whole house for that price. The prices are outrageous these days. Crazy. <laughs> this one is just relevant to everybody, right? If I say I'm hungry, we got about 27 minutes until I'm a different person. <laughs> Last one, and we're going to get into the word. I pro oh, no, two more, two more. Um, when you're trying to be a good friend, but you're low-key lazy, I ain't reading all that. I'm happy for you, though, or sorry that it happened. <laughs> I don't know if we're supposed to laugh at that. <laughs> All right, last one. This is the last one. Scientists have created an electronic sleeve that fits over your heart to keep it beating forever. Um, somebody commented, but I still can't play music on the YouTube app and close it. Oh, okay. Okay. Should have ended on them. <sighs> All right. Um, things unseen. We've been, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about it. We've been talking about speaking in tongues. We've been talking about the spiritual gifts. Your pastor prays in the Spirit. Your pastor, me, and many in this church pray in the Spirit. We're filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We speak in tongues. <laughs> and sometimes I just want you to know that just to kind of get the awkwardness over with, like to kind of like, you do what? <laughs> You really do that? Like, you really? And, it, and I want to talk to you really on the practical side of just how practical and how important it is to have the infilling of the baptism of the Holy Spirit for today. Not just for conferences, not just for revivals, not just for just when you get to be in a service with your favorite speaker, but for your marriage and for raising your kids, and for navigating emotional and mental struggles, and, and navigating difficult political tensions, like you and I, we have to have the Holy Spirit Amen. to overflow. Not just to a measure we can manage, but to the measure that it consumes our lives. And so we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it today very plainly and practically because I feel like a lot of times when, when we get into subjects like this or we get into top, topics like this, it's just not practically talked about. It's real just like hype and energy and emotion and that's all great. That's like all of our makeup. That's like being creative and being excited. But then sometimes we just need to know the basic one, two, three. We just need to know the one, two, three of the Holy Spirit. I mean, I've heard stories of people, like, receiving the Holy Spirit, and, like, they've gone to the altar, and, and like, they've raised their hands, and someone's, like, praying for them, and, and they're like, all right, now, now um, start saying hallelujah as, as, as fast as you can. And so the person's like, okay, and they start saying hallelujah, and everybody starts shouting, like, oh, they got the Holy Spirit, oh, they got it, they're speaking in tongues, and they're kind of like, what just happened? Like, <laughs> I, and so there are, there are things out there that have caused us to be standoffish with the Holy Spirit, to be apprehensive, to kind of say, like, I don't know about all that kind of stuff. And we have to make up in our mind, even though some things have been done illegitimately, doesn't mean the Holy Spirit isn't therefore very legitimate and very necessary. And so we've said, I don't know, it's a little wacky and it's a little weird, and we've just done away with it, not realizing it's a part of the Trinity, it's a part of God, it is God. And, and I want to talk to you real practically, and, and I want to just recap again last week, main verse, Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 5 and 8. Once, 
when he was eating with him, he commanded, Jesus, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. John baptized you with water, but in just a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. But you will receive the Holy Spirit in verse 8. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in, Jer in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We talked about the three main purposes of, of prophecy is to strengthen, encourage, and to comfort. You can see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and, verse, and, and chapter 14. And then one of the main things we saw in a spirit-filled setting, a spirit-filled church, and a spirit-filled community that things should be done properly and orderly. And the things that we need now more than ever is power, the power of the Holy Spirit. We need love. When Paul was talking about the gifts of the, of the Holy Spirit, in 1 Corinthians in chapter, chapter 12 and 14, right in the middle, he gives us the love chapter in 13. So the center of all of it is wrapped around this, this whole amazing idea of love. That if I speak in tongues and do all these amazing things, but I don't love, it's all, it's all just a waste. It's all nothing. And so what I, what I want to intrigue you or want to give you just a little bit of an appetite for is if you need strength, if you need encouragement and you need comfort, then you need the Holy Spirit. And we all need all of those things. We, need, we will always need strength. We will always need encouragement. And we will always need comfort. One of the names for the Holy Spirit is the comforter. And there's a false comfort that we've been living in. And there's a comfort that God is making available to us by way of the Holy Spirit. So let's begin. I want to begin with a quote from C.S. Lewis. Are y'all ready to get into it now for part two? C.S. Lewis said it like this, Christianity, if false, is of no importance, and if true, of infinite importance. The only thing it cannot be is moderately important. Christianity, if false, is of no importance, and if true, infinite importance. The only thing it cannot be is moderately important. And I think when, when we get to the, the place in Scripture and the place in Christianity, we start talking about the gifts of the Spirit and speaking in tongues, and, and, and we get moderate. We get standoffish. We don't, we're not all in. We're all in for Jesus being our Savior. We're all, we're all in about Jesus dying on the cross, and we're all in about the blood of Jesus, and we preach that, and we believe in that, we believe in, in, in all of that. But then, like, when we get over here to Acts 2, and we start talking about the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit, and we talk, start talking about all this stuff involving the Holy Spirit, we're not all in. We're not all in. And the church, the church has struggled with this because, because the, the church has made a, is making a decision of, and I've just seen it just in leadership forums and, and different outlets of just training and ministry. You know, there's like, there's a way, there's just basically mechanisms and, and formulas and, and we're going we're gonna to do church really, really, really well. We're just going to do it really, really, really well. Like we're going to do it really professional and really excellent. And then there's like a whole nother group of people who are like, forget all that. We're doing things by the Spirit. You know, and we're just going to flow with it. And we're not going to worry about planning and preparing. And we're just going to let the Holy Spirit do whatever he wants to do. Which one is right? Neither. Neither one of them are right. And what Family Worship Center is striving to be is being a place of excellence and being a place that is spirit-led. And we will do it. Can you hear me today? We will do it. We will be a church of order and of, uh, of doing things properly and doing things with excellence. And we will be led by the Spirit. 
We will be a church that is led by the Spirit, and we will be a church that, that does things in order. And we will do things the, the, to the best of our ability, and then we're going to trust the leading and the direction and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Why? Because we need power, we need encouragement, we need comfort, and we need to be people who can be able to distribute those things. Like anytime someone comes to an event, anytime someone comes to a service, and anytime someone joins a life group, and anytime someone goes to anything that involves Family Worship Center, I want it to be of excellence, and I want it to be full of the Spirit of God, full of the love of God. Do you do things with excellence, or do you do things led by the Spirit? You do them both. You do both, and we can and we will do both. Pastor Jim Rayley says it like this, the Holy Spirit does not make me better than you, it makes me better than me. The Holy Spirit doesn't make me better than you, it makes me better than me. I've got to have the Holy Spirit to be the husband that God has called me to be. I need the Holy Spirit to be able to be the father that God needs me to be in the times that we're living in. You need the Holy Spirit to be able to be the minister that God's called you to be, to be able to be the business person that God's called you to be, to be able to be the family member. Whatever, whatever the, the title is, to be able to operate in that gift to the maximum potential, you got to have the Holy Spirit. you got to have the Holy Spirit whispering and guiding and giving you wisdom and counsel and everything that you do. Acts chapter 2. Let's talk about it. Let's just talk about it. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, verse 2. Go ahead and circle, underline, highlight, suddenly. What I want to talk to you today, I want to give you just five practical things about the Holy Spirit, about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Practical things. And that is this, number one, when you are filled, it happens quickly. Suddenly, the Spirit of God came. It happens quickly. Now, I have friends that it took them a long time of praying and seeking and asking God to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But when it happened, it happened suddenly. Like we were at the conference and we're all praying and we all got received, we all received and he didn't receive and he's like, what's wrong with me? You know, like what did I do? Like why am I the outcast? Like why am I second best? Why didn't I give it like all everybody else got it? And we're like, we don't know. We're still just going to pray and believe. And sure enough, on the drive home, he's just driving home. He's just like, God, like what in the world? Like I, I really want, like I really want. And then he got filled with the Holy Spirit. When it happens, it happens Suddenly, verse 3 in chapter 2 of the book of Acts, Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. Verse 4, very important. This whole verse right here. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Point number 2, practicality of being filled with the Holy Spirit. We speak... And the Spirit gives the utterance. So nobody's control, like, I don't just lose control whenever I begin to pray in the Spirit. I am speaking. I am choosing to speak. Are you okay? Like, we are talking about it. <laughs> I am choosing to speak, and the Spirit gives the utterance. Over into Jude. The Bible says this in verses 17 through 21. But you, my dear friends, but must remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ predicted. They told you that in the last times there would be scoffers whose purpose in life is to satisfy their ungodly desires. These people are the ones who are creating divisions among you. They follow their natural instincts because they do not have God's spirit in them. Verse 20. You all know it very well. Some of us do if you don't. But you, dear friends, must build each other up in your most holy faith 
Pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. You must build each other up in your most holy faith. Pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. And wait and await the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ who will bring you eternal life. And this way you will keep yourself safe and in God's love. Praying in the Spirit. Building each other up. And you, you, are, you put yourself in a place of safety and security that's found in the love of God. Anybody just love the word? Like, we start going through here. And I, I mean, God's word is so good. Amen. Let's go ahead and talk about this. Can we take a time out and just, we're, we're going to pull the layers back just a little bit more. Why is it speaking in tongues? <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> Why is it speaking? Like, why, why couldn't it be six-pack abs? Like, when I received the power of the Holy Spirit. Like, why can't it be, like, I could have a 40-inch vert. Like, it's the power of God, right? Like, why can't I just be, like, Superman? Like, why, can't, why isn't it the ability to fly? Like, anybody else still, like, a kid at heart? Like, I just wish I could fly. Like, golly. <laughs> Why, why is it speaking in tongues? Why can't, out of all the things, it's speaking in tongues. That that is the, 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 the initial physical evidence that you've been filled with the Spirit is speaking in like, why couldn't, it, why couldn't the physical evidence be any of those other things that, that seem so much cooler? Like so much more beneficial. There'd be no doubt. Like, he's flying. He's filled with the Spirit. You know, like, and people wouldn't be like, that's weird. They'd be like, that's cool. I want that. Why has it got to be something weird? What? Why? <laughs> Y'all too cool. Why? Why is it speaking in tongues? Because God is good. Because God knows more than I do. Because God knows more than we, than we know. God knows better than us. It's very mysterious. But God is very good. Perhaps it is due to the biblical truth that states that the tongue is the most unruly part of our body. So I don't think it's by accident that God said, I'm going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and you're going to speak in another language. Because we've got to get your tongue under control. Because it is the most unruly part part of your body. It goes beyond human reasoning, which moves us into, into a trust on God more than ourselves. Because we don't know all things, only God does. And it takes a bold commitment to desire the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is a prerequisite in being a bold witness for God. So before you begin to boldly speak for God, God wants you to boldly communicate with him in a heavenly language. Before you begin boldly communicating to the world around you in an earthly language. And we've gotten that backwards. We've been bold about speaking for God, but we haven't been bold in speaking and communicating with God and to God. James chapter 3. You may already know it, but if you don't, dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in church for you, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Verse 2, indeed, we all make many mistakes. <laughs> for if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect. We would be perfect. If we, would, if we could control our tongues and could also control ourselves in every other way. We cannot make a large horse go wherever we want 
We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go. Even though the winds are strong, in the same way the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. Verse 6, and among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is, a, it is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish. Verse 8, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No. You can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. And if you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with humility that comes from wisdom. But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder. Somebody to say disorder. disorder. And evil of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of, God, fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. Proverbs 18.21 says this, The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Back into Acts chapter 2. Are you doing good? We're going to read through just a little bit more of Acts chapter 2, verses 5 through 18. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation in Jerusalem, living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running, and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be, they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our native languages. Verse 12, they stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean, they asked each other. But others in the cr crowd ridiculed them, saying, they are just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, listen carefully, all of you fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem, make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for all that. <laughs> <laughs> For some people, it's 5 o'clock somewhere, right? And so, <laughs> Papa time again. And so, Alan Jackson there. I don't believe in it. It's just, you know, just grew up in southeast Texas. And so, there it is. And so, no, what, verse 16, no, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit, I love this, on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Verse 18, in those days I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. So the third thing, third thing, let's get back to it. We will boldly share our faith. We will boldly share our story. It doesn't matter what setting we're in. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, it happens quickly you speak as the Spirit gives utterance, and then it gives you the, the ability to be bold and share your story and share your faith in any setting. Ver down to verse 37, Peter's words pierced their hearts, and they said to him and to other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins, turn to God, and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Those who believe what Peter said were baptized and added to the church, 
and about 3,000 in all. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, fellowship, and sharing of meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. It goes all the way back to Acts chapter 1. That the infilling of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to allow you the opportunity and the ability to be able to be a bold witness to see people saved. And to see people come into the family of God and to share meals with each other and to do life with each other. I mean, this was a whole other level of fellowship, friends. We get tore up about 10%. They were selling their land and all their stuff and they were putting it in a big pile and say, hey, take what you need. Let's do this together. There was a level of generosity. And so it goes to my fourth point. We will be, so when the practicality of being filled with the Holy Spirit, we will belong to God's word. They talked about the teaching. They talked about community, God's people, generosity, and prayer. And for us, that is believe, belong, impact. That's what we talk about, believe in God, belong to community, and make an impact on the world. I want to flip over to Galatians chapter 5, and we're going to be wrapping up here in just a moment. Verse 16, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Why don't you circle, underline, guide. Somebody say guide. you got to let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us, the, gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you're not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed, somebody say directed. By the Spirit, you're not under obligation to the law of Moses. And when you follow, say follow. The desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, Jealousy, outbursts of anger, self and selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? Romans fourteen seventeen. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of living a life of goodness and peace and joy in what? The Holy Spirit. The, God wants you to be a part and inherit the, king, inherit the kingdom of God. How do you do that? You do that by way of the Holy Spirit, by, by, by fellowship with the Holy Spirit. What is the kingdom of God? It's wherever God is king. It's wherever God is king. You want the kingdom of God in your heart? Is he king? You want, the, you, want, you, want the, you want the kingdom of God in your life and in your home and in your business? Is he king? Is he the one that has supreme authority and has the final say and is honored and is revered? I'm telling you, wherever the kingdom of God is, is where God is king. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The band, you guys can go ahead and come up. I'm wrapping up. As we are filled and as we are directed and as we follow the Holy Spirit, we produce these kind of fruits. And there's a whole lot of Christians. I've been there. Everybody's been there. Where we haven't produced these kind of fruits. And I want to encourage somebody today. You can't produce these kind of fruits on your own. 
So when somebody gets mad and somebody gets bitter and someone does something wrong and you know they don't love God, God is not king, God is not revered, they're not filled with the spirit, and you get offended, and, you, and, you, and, and we act surprised, friend, we're saved. <laughs> but if we don't have the Holy Spirit, we're not going to be able to produce these fruits either. You see those fruits. Every single one of them are absolutely paramount in the times that we're living in right now. Every single one of them. Self-control, gentleness, patience, peace, joy, long-suffering. So we have to have the Holy Spirit, friend. Church, we have to have the Holy Spirit. And what 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 I'm really trying to say is, you have to have the Holy Spirit. You're not going to be able to raise your kids without Him. You're going to do a good job. You're going to do a great job. But I don't don't know about you, but I don't want to just do a great job. I want to do a godly job. Good is great. Godly is better. And, and I think, I think we've seen the best that man can do without God. And now we've got to transition out of, if we truly believe we've seen the best that humanity can do without God, then it's time to cross the threshold and say, God, I'm rendering all of my intellect. I'm, I'm rendering all of my experience. I'm, render, I'm, I'm setting all of my training and my education. And I'm setting all that aside because I, because I have this, this notion in me that you are good, that you are sovereign, that you are creator, and that you have a better way of doing this. That your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. And your words are greater than my words. And so, God, I trust you. This is me stepping out of what I know and stepping into a God who knows everything. You know it all, God. You know it all, God. Last point is this. We have to stop living for God and start living from God. Everybody's trying so hard to live for God. Trying to be a good Christian, trying to just trying to be trying to be good enough. But friend, if you realize you're not living for him, but that you're living from him, that the same spirit, the Bible says that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in us to quicken our mortal bodies. So in your weakness his strength is made known. In our insufficiencies there is an opportunity for the power of God to be manifest in our world just right where you're sitting, I want you to just bow your head and just close your eyes. He's the comforter, friend. He's the comforter. He wants to bring order to your life. Every thought, every emotion, every decision, every tension, every battle, every struggle, It's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. It's by his spirit. And with no one looking around, if you say, you know what, I've been real skeptical about some of this spirit stuff, but I'm I'm open to receiving the spirit that the Bible, the Holy Spirit that the Bible is talking about. I just want you to just throw your hand up and you can put it right back down. I ain't gonna do nothing funny, not gonna do nothing weird. 
but you just sense something. You say, you know what? I want, I want the Holy Spirit. I want the power of God. I want you to just throw your hand up. You can put it just right back down. I see that. I see that. Anybody else? Just you and God and me. Come on. I just want to just gauge where the room is at. Anybody else? I see that hand. Hallelujah. Anybody else, you've always believed in it and you've just never been filled with it, just, why don't you just throw your hand up and you can put it right back down. I see that hand in you. And maybe for many of us, you need a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. Why don't you just throw your hand up and put it right back down. Come on, let's all stand on our feet. watching online why don't you just join with us and just ask the Holy Spirit this is what we want more than ever we want the Holy Spirit to invade your life not just a service but your life can you just put your hands out like this and just close your eyes the Bible says it's a it's a gift you receive gifts you ain't got to earn it you ain't got to work for it you don't have to pray hard enough there's not a specific prayer there isn't just it's just saying God I want the Holy Spirit I want to be filled. I'm done just doing it to the measure of what I know. I'm done just being in control of every single thought and emotion. God, I surrender my life to you. And if you have a, if you have, you've been filled, I just want you to just begin to, to pray in your prayer language even now. You may hear somebody next to you praying in the spirit or praying in tongues. Hey, this is a moment we're just building ourselves up. There's a, there's a moment where somebody behind you or in front of you or next to you is just building themselves up. And just in your own words, can you just begin to say out of your mouth, I can't pray it for you, friend, but can you just say, God, fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. God, it's not about just all the exhibition of all the things that we've seen in Pentecostalism. It's not just about all those things, God. But God, it's about power. It's about love. It's about order. And God, as we ask for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, I believe you are putting things in order, God. In people's minds, God. In people's hearts, God. That no counselor can do. God, we, we, we want, we support counseling and and we believe in counseling. It's one of the first things we're going to ask people to go and get when they're going through tough times. But then there's another counselor. That's not, that's not a human. It's you, God. It's the Holy Spirit. And so, God, we ask for the great counselor to step in and to bring order, God, and to, and to, and to silence the lies of the enemies of depression and of anxiety. And God, we ask for the truth to be established. God, uproot everything that is not of you. And God, would you plant the truth in place, God, that we would not be without void, God. Come on, one more time, just say, God, fill me with your spirit. And you ain't going to get it any other way than by way of the Holy Spirit. We thank God for counselors and, and all kinds of things that are made available through us by way of man. But God, we ask for you to fill us up with your Holy Spirit to give us the power to be witnesses, to, to give us encouragement and comfort, to guide us, God. God, would you do it right now? Come on, in your own words, can you just say, God, fill me up? God, would you fill me up with your Holy Spirit? Come on, really mean it. If you really want it and you really desire it and you need to be refilled and there are things that are out of order in your life and in your heart and in your soul and in your mind, I'm telling you, friend, the Holy Spirit is above all of that and he'll put it into order. He'll silence the voices. He'll, he'll do away with the nightmares and the sleepless nights and the anxiety in your heart. He will do it, friend. He will, he will bring order to that chaos and he will bring order to your mental state because of his Holy Spirit because the power of his Holy Spirit so God fill us up God refill us God